Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, this is my custom doorbell kit. I have actually programmed this specific doorbell to play three different uh, Legend of Zelda sound bites, which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, after which, uh, we're going to put one of these together from scratch, and you're going to follow along with me. So, uh, actually, it's more of a, a cubicle doorbell or a personalized doorbell within the house. The outputs can be amplified, but it comes with an 8 ohm speaker, 8 ohm uh, 0.5 watt speaker. So, uh, it's not overly loud, but good for, uh, you know, within the house. It's kind of a novelty item. Uh, but again, you can add uh, an audio amplifier if you wish to the speaker outputs uh, to amplify to a larger speaker. Anyway, let's have a, let's show you an example. Now, uh, the 8 ohm speaker plugs directly onto the board. I've got my button right here. That last one's the longest. It's uh, it got the lowest volume, unfortunately, of the of the three. It just keeps going in that order. Uh, so the button is included. You solder directly under the board. Uh, right now, I'm actually using a variable power supply to power it, but uh, it comes with a nine volt connector, which you can use if you wish. So let's put one together. The kit comes with a nine volt uh, nine volt connector, which is optional. Printed circuit board custom, uh, a programmed audio chip with socket, a uh, zero, uh, oh, sorry, a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a ten microfarad electrolytic capacitor, two pin header, 160k ohm uh, resistor, two 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, a 78L05 5 volt regulator, two pin terminal block, a uh, two-pin button, and uh, an 8-ohm, 0.5-watt uh, speaker. So first of all, let's do our resistor and our two ceramic capacitors. The resistor, the 160K ohm resistor, goes in the R1 slot, labeled OSC for oscillator. Uh, OSC R1. Place the resistor in there. That sets our internal uh, sampling frequency. And the two ceramic capacitors right here are actually labeled 104 and uh, they are placed in the C2 slot labeled 0.1U C2 for 0.1 micro and C4 0.1U. Now there's no polarization on uh, any of those co components so place them in either way as long as they're in the right slots. Next we'll do the two electrolytic capacitors and the 78LO5. Sorry for the poor lighting here. Uh, I'm actually moving to a new lab very soon and I'll have LED lighting to fix that lighting issue. Uh, anyway, back to it. You have a 78L05, looks like a transistor, has a front side, uh, a flat side with writing on it, and it has a curved side. It's lying on its curved side, so it's wobbling back and forth. And that goes in the 78L0, 7805 slot, right here. Now, on the footprint, there's a flat side and a curved side. From a bird's eye view, make sure that the flat front side of the transistor, or sorry, the regulator with the writing on it, faces the left from this perspective on the, with the flat side of the footprint, and that the curved side faces the uh, C2, the C2 capacitor, the 0 0.1 microfarad uh, capacitor. This will make sense when you have because really from a bird's eye view, flat side, curved side, really you can't screw it up. Uh, but if you do turn it, if you do place it in the wrong way, uh, your circuit will not regulate to 5 volts and you'll likely fry your circuit. You'll certainly fry your regulator. Anyway, the two electrolytic capacitors. You read the labels because they're in size, they're about the same thing. One is a zero, uh, one is a labeled 1U and the other is 10U for 10 micro. The C1 slot right here is labeled C1 10U. So find that the uh, 10 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor uh, and what you'll notice is that there's a long lead and a short lead on either, each of the capacitors. The long lead is positive, short lead is negative. And in the case of C1, there's a little tiny uh, plus sign on the left pin. You'll have to you have really look for it because it's very, very small. Make sure that the positive lead of the 10 microfarad capacitor, the long lead, goes in the left-hand pin from this perspective with the positive sign, and that the short lead goes in the, on the right. Don't turn that around or else you'll pop it when you power it on. Your uh, one microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes in the C3 slot right here, and again, the positive lead for that, long lead is on the left, there's a little positive, little plus sign just above the left-hand lead from this perspective, and then the short lead will go in the right pin. Don't turn that one around or else your uh, audio circuit will not work. 
So very, very important. Take care, and uh, if uh, you need to, watch this segment a couple times just to make sure that you understand. Next, we will do our terminal block, our two-pin header, and our socket. First of all, the socket. On the footprint, uh, it's labeled uh, OTP. On the left of the socket footprint, there's a notch right here. On the left side of the socket, there is a notch. On the left side of the chip, there is a notch. These are this is a reference. Make sure that when you place your uh, your chip in or your socket in, that the notch on the ch on the uh, socket lines up with the notch on the footprint. And then once you've soldered that in the place, being very careful not to make any shorts before you plug in the socket or sorry the uh, IC, the chip, that the notch on the left hand side is face is matched up from a bird's eye view with the notch on the socket and the notch on the footprint. You turn that around, you power it on, you're gonna you're gonna fry it instantly. So be very careful not to reverse the orientation. Two pin header, easy. Short side, long side. Place the short side into the SPK set of holes there. Uh, make sure it's flush to the board. Solder that into place. Make sure there's no shorts. That's where we'll plug in our speaker and our terminal block. On the terminal block, there is a terminal side with two terminals, two screw terminals, and there's a plastic side. Make sure that the side with the screw terminals is facing outwards, like so, so that you can so you can uh, screw in your 9-volt battery, 9-volt uh, battery connector. So after we solder that into place, we're just about done. We just have to worry about soldering in our button, placing in our 9-volt uh, battery connector, and plugging in our speaker. Very easy steps. Now this kit doesn't come with wire, you'll have to supply your own wire, and it can be really any length. Uh, if you're going to have an extremely uh, long distance between the, the module and the button, you're probably going to want to have a little bit thicker wire, uh, but it's essentially just acting as a short. So this is just two wires that I'm using. Uh, I've cut off the insulation on each end. Uh, I'm going to solder one wire here, and I'm going to solder the other wire here. So then we'll have two floating leads. And those two floating leads can be soldered to each of the two leads on the button. So that when you press the button, it essentially shorts those two pins together. So I'm going to solder those uh, on offline. And we'll come back right back to it. Now, you'll also notice that your speaker has a two-pin header. That plugs, and there's no orientation for this, directly onto the SPK header as you just you just soldered it. Lastly, um, what you want to do is the terminal block. You want to unscrew the, the two screw terminals, not all the way, but you know, make it so that the openings are open. Take your 9-volt connector, place your red wire in the V-plus terminal on the left, screw it down tightly, and take your black wire, your negative, and place it in the right slot labeled the G and D for ground. So, after we're done that, we can put in a 9 volt battery which also doesn't come with the kit, you have to supply your own battery and we'll test it. So I've got it all together, speaker plugged in, 9 volt adapt, 9 volt uh, battery connector screwed into the terminal blocks, I got my button so I'll power it on just by plugging in the battery Works like a charm. Easy to put together. If, you, uh, if you're interested, I can probably make you make a uh, custom audio chip for you uh, for a custom doorbell for an extra ten bucks. Uh, you could probably, uh, if you're ever interested, uh, you could send me a sound bite. I could determine whether or not it would be compatible or not. Anyhow, uh, this kit will be available at engineeringshock.com and electroniclessons.com, which will take you to my eBay store. Thanks for watching, everyone.